The OECS Youth Strategy is a work in progress, but what we are seeking to do with this strategy is to make it a central element of the overall OECS Growth and Development Strategy. This presentation is going to present the principles on the good in the formation of the youth strategy and will speak to the ideas that are being embedded in terms of concrete actions that need to be undertaken in member states to achieve the empowerment of youth. The contents of the strategy focuses on an analysis of the state of youth today, the OECS vision for youth, and elements of the proposed strategy for youth development. The situation affecting young people today is one of generally being characterized as one of deep crisis, but it is at the same time, by its very nature, a situation of great opportunity. The state of youth today in the OECS, there's a very high proportion of youths which provides an opportunity for growth, innovation and development. Youth constitute at least 30% of the population of the OECS and therefore are a very important demographic if we are speaking about future economic opportunities, social sustainability, and national progress. Our youth face many social and economic problems which require that we work with them, nurture and empower them to realize their ambitions. The challenge there is to harness the capacity and capabilities of the youth in the region for its development, while at the same time providing opportunities for young people to achieve their fullest potential. What is therefore required are clear and realistic policies and the updating of existing policies to ensure that critical issues are addressed in an integrated and holistic manner. The approach being taken in shaping this youth policy would be first to conduct, and this has already been done in many studies done by CARICOM, by the Caribbean Development Bank, by the Commonwealth Youth Program, uh, an analysis of the state of youth in the region today. We are going to shape from that the mission and vision for youth engagement, the pillars of the youth development program, and examples of the cross-cutted interventions that are to be implemented in the short to medium term. Youth constitute 33% of the demographic of the OECS. They are 33% of the population. Three out of every 10 persons in the OECS are young persons. Young people are faced with a range of problems from risk, facing risk, rape, violence, drugs. The youth constitute a very significant population of the persons who are in many of the countries, youth are affected in many countries youth represent a significant slice of violent crime offenses presenting themselves to the courts from burglary to theft to wounding to battery possession of firearms threats throwing missiles narcotics and the trends show increasing risk by young people in those uh, forms of criminal behavior. When one looks at the engagement by sex, we see that, or by gender, we see that males constitute a hugely disproportionate section of youth at risk. Male offenses are five, six, as high as ten times 
the offences by females. In the health sector, youth are the most vulnerable segment of the population affected by non-communicable diseases such as obesity, hypertension, but are also affected by undernourishment. Uh, our statistics suggest that the prevalence of undernourishment in many of the countries range from 4.9% in 2012 to as high as 18.7%. The morbidity rates for youth as well are disturbing. There have been overall increases in rapes, domestic violence, vehicular accidents, and drug-related events increases in obesity, hypertension, and high cholesterol, blood levels, and heart disease. And this age group are the largest consumers of obstetrical and gynecological goods and services. So there are many factors affecting young persons, the health of young persons in the region, which have to be addressed in any strategy for the empowerment and development of youth. The age group 15 to 24 within the youth sector has the least chance of death from natural causes. They show the highest risk of dying from violence and intentional injuries and vehicular accidents or sexually transmitted diseases and the display of risk-taking behaviors. And HIV AIDS is among the leading causes of death among youth in that age sector. On the employment front, the youth sector is characterized by an average of 28% joblessness, inadequate preparation for work in terms of skills as well as attitudes. And youth unemployment throughout the OECS is at least twice as high as the unemployment rate of the the overall population. The complicating factor here is the population below the poverty line, ranging from as low as 18.4% in Antigua and Barbuda to 38% in Grenada. From an educational perspective, there is also cause for concern because Early childhood education is still an underprovided sector in education. And when we consider that 0 to 3, 3 to 5 are the most formative periods of life for the development of cognitive capacity, early childhood education needs to be attended to. But there are very disturbing patterns of failure. 23%, only 23% of the cohort of students sitting CSEC, CXE, CSEC exams obtain five or more subjects, which is the minimum requirement for decent wage employment. And we, sh we see declining uh, performance by males. So in terms of early childhood education, the net intake rates for early childhood there's a significant proportion of children not entering school at the prescribed age. The net intake rates range from 50 to 80 percent. The gender parity index at the primary level is slightly in favor of males. But the gender parity index at the secondary level changes in favor of females. A greater proportion of males do not enter secondary school or drop out much earlier. There is a decline in participation of males at the upper secondary level between Forms 3 to Forms 5. And only 17 to 33 percent of the cohorts achieve grades 1, 2, and 3 in five or more subjects, including English and mathematics. Fewer than 15 percent of the graduates from secondary school are able to access higher education. And the average enrollment rate of males attending tertiary education is 35%. So 
to put this in context, these are the local challenges. But young persons as a significant demographic of the overall population are not immune from the wider challenges facing the Caribbean. The reality is that in this era of human existence, global problems are also local preoccupations. Whether we are speaking of economic crisis or climate change or food or energy or water, there's a local manifestation of the problem that is urgent and inescapable. Global or local, the problems are interconnected and consequently their solutions must be integrated. Historical experience has shown that piecemeal solutions can no longer be expected to impact the problems of the magnitude that we now face. So when we look at the major challenges facing the world today, we can see their interconnectedness. There are health challenges. There is the issue of climate change. There are water challenges. There are challenges of energy, of land, natural resource use, problems of waste management. All of these require specific solutions but given the impact of each of these in their own domain and their overall contribution to the development challenges of small island states, we need to seek integrated solutions to those challenges. And as we look to each of those areas of challenge and shape the solutions, the question that we need to ask ourselves is what are the implications for youth development of all of these. There is also the challenge of the realization of the objectives of the revised Treaty of Baste, which calls for the establishment of a single economic space, the OECS as a single economic space. We have set three major priorities, and two of these carry fundamental challenges for young people facilitating the free movement, growth, and development of people, goods, services, capital, and ideas. And the second is assuring the security and well-being of citizens. In both of these priority areas, as well as in looking at the key economic priorities of addressing food security, energy, transportation, jobs, education, climate change, and disaster management, we have to put youth front and center. What is the OECS vision for youth? The vision, very simply put, is OECS youth, healthy, educated, and empowered citizens realizing their fullest potential, preparing today to own tomorrow. These, this vision, very simply put, but it encapsulates the essence of what we are seeking to do here. We are touching in an integrated way every facet of the integral human being. Health, education, citizenship empowerment, the re addressing the realization of their fullest potential, not for tomorrow, but preparing today so that they can own tomorrow. Our mission therefore, is to create an enabling environment and expanding opportunities for all of the youth of the region to realize their potential and fulfill their responsibilities. A major departure in the construction of this strategy is that it aims to create opportunity with and for young persons so that they can take charge of their own destiny. It is not about creating programs for young people or doing things that will require young people to fit into a paradigm constructed by older folks. What are the main pillars of the proposed OECS strategy for youth development? We want to look at education and training, employment and entrepreneurship, creativity and culture, child and youth protection, citizenship and identity, and healthy lifestyles. The guiding principles on the good in this 
have been shaped by the following questions. What are the fundamental things that need to be done in each of these pillars? A, to address core problems, and B, to create a different future. Secondly, how can the programs for each area reinforce and enrich other areas? How can what we do, for example, with respect to healthy lifestyles help to strengthen employment and entrepreneurship opportunities? How does employment and entrepreneurship overlap with creativity and culture? Where does youth protection fit into the healthy lifestyles paradigm and the protection of youth and children as citizens and enjoying particular rights? In order to ensure that we are not reinventing the wheel and that we converge efforts with existing worthwhile initiatives, there is a compliance grid that is being developed in collaboration with our development partners. What this compliance grid does is to look at the strategy and principles of youth engagement as espoused by a range of development partners from UNICEF to UNFPA to UNESCO to the Commonwealth Youth Program to the CARICOM Youth Strategy to the Caribbean Development Bank, among others to see what are the main initiatives that they are proposing, that they have been proposing or are undertaken for young people and with young people, and how can we converge efforts with those strands so that the OECS Youth Strategy represents a full and tightly integrated convergence of a range of initiatives, best practice initiatives, some of which are already being undertaken. So for the strategy to make a difference, it must be practical, it must be multi-sectoral and multi-dimensional. From the perspective of young people, we are certain that we need to make it fun, we need to make it relevant, we need to make it exciting, we need to make it empowering for young people to take control of this strategy. Let us look at some examples of the kinds of initiatives that will be incorporated, that we propose to incorporate under each of the pillars. Under education and training, the key elements of the OECS education strategy would obtain here, but interpreted from a youth development perspective. Among the exciting ideas is the idea of having student exchanges at the primary and secondary level within the OECS to include Martinique and Guadeloupe. Internships, tertiary level technical and vocational training in Martinique and Guadeloupe in particular for technical and vocational students in the OECS. Matching the curriculum to the labor market needs and especially including IT, improving IT and knowledge management, mentorship and career development programs that would see, for example, professionals going into the schools and giving career talks and guidance, uh, exposing groups of students to the workplace so that they can walk them through what is done in various professions, both white collar and blue collar professions, so that young persons get a very practical sense and idea of how education relates to work opportunity and career development. The competency-based curricula linked to CVQs and the NTA across national um, qualifications, across secondary and tertiary institutions. The strengthening of student loan schemes at tertiary level so that our students can access universities, a wide range of universities globally. Associated with that will be a major thrust by the OECS Commission to leverage our diplomatic relations to source the largest cluster of scholarships possible to facilitate the tertiary training 
of young people in the OECS. The introduction of skills training programs early and with continuous exposure to life skills training and offering skills training programs that are targeted at boys, for example, training in sports, in entrepreneurship, in digital technologies, in areas that would excite the imagination of boys in particular and engage their gender characteristics. In education and training, we also look to develop capacity for school administration to manage at-risk youth. A major thrust there would be an OECS-wide program for the for development of adequate management capabilities in schools. Our schools, our school principals and vice principals and the leadership of schools need to be strengthened and engaged with, provided with the skills necessary to cope with the modern challenges faced by schools. Improving student leadership through the establishment of student councils, uniform groups and school clubs we think is vital, a vital initiative to be included. And this is where we see the integrated and cross-cutting nature of some of these initiatives. Because ensuring that every school in the OECS has an elected student council that is given a role to play in peer leadership and governance of the school is also an important way of developing citizenship among our students, uh, cultivating um, adherence and respect to democratic values, and record assuming responsibility at their level in the schools. We also want to promote our schools as health-promoting institutions. In many countries, the schools provide a base for inoculation of the youth population for the undertaking of preventative health care programs, for example, in dental care, and healthy school feeding programs. Coming as an important element of the OECS Agricultural Action Plan is the revamping and the reorganization of school feeding programs to provide more nutritious meals, make use of organic foodstuff produced by local farmers to strengthen local economies, but also to improve nutri the nutritional status of students. Healthy lifestyles. The use of ICT in the health and social sector to, for the collection of the data on youth health indicators and social indicators via apps so that health planners are able to more proactively address the needs and concerns of health concerns of young persons. We are speaking to, to undertaking partnerships with y existing youth initiatives such as a Spot Avis, which is a Facebook website that showcases youth achievement in sports and which now will also promote healthy lifestyles among young persons. The revamping of the OECS uh, sports competitions, the OECS engagement in sports, working with national sporting organizations in key sporting areas such as swimming, cricket, netball, volleyball, basketball, athletics, uh, football, and the martial arts. And youth adventure marathons that can engage young people not just in physical fitness, fitness challenges, but also engage them in discovering the geography of their countries and the other countries of the OECS. Walk OECS, we call it. So that young persons in the exchanges that we spoke about earlier, students on exchange from Grenada to Dominica can go hiking in Dominica, discover Dominica by hiking Dominica. There is also the promotion of sexual and reproductive health and related rights, the provision of health services targeted at the health conditions affecting young people, particularly sexually transmitted diseases and HIV AIDS, and the strengthening of emotional intelligence through sports 
and curriculum infusion in education. On the citizenship and identity front, an innovative idea is the creation of national the establishment of a national youth service in all of the countries of the OACS, not as a bureaucratic construct requiring the establishment of a, an entire program like the Cadet Corps, but simply requiring that every student at the secondary school level offer between 100 and 150 hours of community service. In the case of primary school students, we are asking for them to do 25 hours of community service. The form of community service, the modality by which it is to be delivered, will be left to the individual student to, to choose. In both, at both primary and secondary level, that engagement with community service can be linked to, in the case of secondary, to CSEC Social Studies SBAs, and in the case of the primary students, to the Caribbean Primary Exit Assessment, internal assessment components. OECS internships for university students, with OECS institutions and with agencies of member states, so that young persons doing degrees in economics, in um, in medicine, in engineering, in whatever the field, can do summer internships in member states and with institutions of the OECS for work exposure to begin to develop experience, gain experience in their chosen field of professional endeavor. Climate change is a grave existentialist threat to the OECS and we want to engage youth in managing climate change, identifying interventions that can help to mitigate the impact of climate change in their on their communities and their homes. There is also the challenge of deepening regional consciousness. So we, would, we will, through the education department of the OACS, the education division, developing uh, modules on OECS integration, on the revised Treaty of Basse, on the efforts being made to deepen the integration thrust at the OECS level and also within wide, the wider CARICOM to become an important component of the social studies program in our schools. On the child and youth protection front, there is need for major public sensitization campaigns on child sexual abuse that will lead to and be associated with the passage of the OECS child protection legislation that has been developed with the assistance of partners like UNICEF and the UNFPA. Reducing child poverty through integrated modalities from school feeding to education grants and other interventions that can lessen the impact of poverty on children and youth. Increasing the awareness of the need for child protection by empowering youth voices to speak to child abuse. Another initiative here would be promoting diversion strategies for juvenile offenders, alternatives to incarceration, and looking at community sentencing initiatives where young persons, rather than being incarcerated, can be given community service sentences to, do, to offer positive uh, solutions to their communities. The conduct of an OECS-wide anti-bullying campaign in collaboration with OECS nationals in the United States who are already engaged in the U.S. in conducting and spearheading major campaign, a major campaign of this nature. Update and en enactment of child protection legislation, including provisions against child labor. On the creativity and culture front, 
the promotion of Cape Visual and Performing Arts, CVQs, and other industry-level qualifications in cultural industry areas in and out of school to encourage young people to develop their creativity in a structured manner undergirded by specific skills in music, in production, in performance that can help to bring improve the quality of the presentation of their creative impulse. An OECS website for cultural e-commerce and promotion of cultural talent. A place where budding artists, singers, producers can showcase their talent, have their recordings available for sale worldwide through the e-commerce site. There's also the need for us across the OECS to take a careful look at the festivals, the major festivals that we have run and to look for opportunities for new festivals, new opportunities for engagement and showcasing of talent, especially youth talent in the OECS. On the employment and entrepreneurship front, we have already spoken to the OECS internships for university students but looking also to strengthen the survival and income generating options for vulnerable youth in particular. So for example, the St. Lucia Youth in Agriculture program, or looking at short-term employment programs that governments have run to provide jobs at a community level, but with an emphasis on youth community service. Promoting micro-enterprises to encourage growth and new business and the OECS Competitive Business Unit has been given a brief to pay particular attention to youth in micro enterprises to provide the necessary support, mentoring, and the capital required to grow these initiatives. Create new opportunities for employment in new and emerging sectors. Associated with that will be also seeking opportunities for youth employment on the international job market and utilizing, for example, the Canada Laser Office of the OECS to pursue youth employment opportunities in countries like Canada. In that process, we spoke earlier about the importance of youth taking responsibility and playing their, taking their own lead role in, in, the, in the youth strategy. We have identified and we continue to seek to identify young persons who are doing amazing things in different spheres of endeavor, such as Warren Castle Jr. of Montserrat, who is a youth entrepreneur, author, and an and investor to engage them as exem exemplars and mentors for other young persons seeking to emulate their success. So the strategy in its final form must show for each intervention uh, impacts across the pillars of um, the pillars of the strategy. So for example, when we talk about entrepreneurship and apprenticeship programs as part of youth education, this impacts not just the sphere of education, but also the area of employment and entrepreneurship. The proposed National Youth Service Program of the OECS will span the areas of education. It will also cover employment and entrepreneurship, healthy lifestyles, citizenship and identity. The development of youth-to-youth -youth and pair-to-pair -pair programs in education, in entrepreneurship and employment, in areas covering citizenship and identity. The youth enterprise programs will be, involved, will be embedded in education and involve significant educational components, but will also focus on citizenship and identity. So these are the emerging 
outlines of the youth strategy for the OECS. And the process going forward will be one of engaging young persons at every level, from the block to the schools to the workplaces, so that we can solicit their ideas using social media, using face-to-face um, -face engagements, using the traditional media to solicit ideas on initiatives that can be very cost-effectively put in place to empower and to develop the youth of the OECS.